The first book of Samuel, chapter 13. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, whereof 2,000 were with Saul in Mishmash and in Mount Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Geba of Benjamin. And of the rest of the people, he sent every man to his tent. <clears throat> and Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also was had an abomination with the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore were in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mishmash eastward from beth -Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and rocks and in high places and in the pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and the people followed him trembling. And he waited seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou came not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash, Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, but thou not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel arose and got himself from Gilgal unto Gibash of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul, Jonathan his son, and the people that were present with him abode in Gibeah for, of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Mishmash. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned unto the way of the Ledith to Oprah, unto the land of Shaul. The other company turned the way to Beth Horon, and another company turned the way of the border that looks in the valley of Zibiom toward the wilderness. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears, but all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share, and to Coulter and his axe and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks, and for the coulters and for the forks and axes, and to sharpen their goads. So it came to pass on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any people that were with Saul or Jonathan. But the, with Saul and Jonathan, his son was there found. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Mishmash. Chapter 14 Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison. That is on the other side, but he told not his father. And Saul waited in the uttermost part of Geba under the pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And the people were about with him about six hundred men. And Ahah, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, wearing an ephod, and the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines, garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. 
and the name of one was Boaz, and the other was Shene. The forefront of one was stitch, situate northward over against Mishmash, and the other southward against Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bore his armor, Come and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say thus to us, Wait until we come to you, then we stand still in our place, and we will not go up unto them. But if they say to us, Come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and we shall be a sign unto us. And both of them were discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they have hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan as an armor bearer, and said, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and his feet, and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer, and slew after them. And that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about twenty men, within as it was a half acre of land, which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was a trembling in the host in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, and so it was a great, very trembling. And the watchmen of Saul and Gibeath of Benjamin looked, and behold, a multitude melted away, and they went on beating down one another. Then said Saul unto the people that were with him, Number now, and see who has gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. And Saul said unto Aha, Bring hither the ark of God, for the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. And it came to pass, while Saul talked to the priest, that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. And Paul said unto the priest, Withdraw thy hand. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came unto the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a very great discomfiture. Moreover, the Philistines that were with the Philistines, moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which came up from them to the camp from the old country round about, even they also turned to be with Israelites when they, that were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel, which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and battle pressed over unto beth Aven. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjourned the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eats any food until evening, that I may be avenged on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was a honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not what the father had charged the people with the oath, wherefore he was, wherefore he put forth the end of his rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in the honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people, and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eats any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father has troubled this land. See, I pray you, how mine eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For had not there been much... For had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? And they smote the Philistines that day from Mishmash to Ajalon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil, and took sheep and oxen and calves, and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord, and that they eat with the blood. And he said, You have transgressed. Roll a great stone unto me this day. And Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people, and say unto them, Bring me hither every man his ox, and every man his sheep, and slay them here, and eat, and sin not against the Lord in eating with the blood. 
And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night and slew them there. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord, the same with the first altar he built unto the Lord. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and spoil them until the morning light. Let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do what so seems good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw hither unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Saul said, Draw near hither all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin has been this day. For as the Lord lives which saves Israel, thought it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then said he unto all Israel, By you on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seems good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of my rod that was in mine hand, and lo, I must die. And Saul answered, God do so and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die? Who has wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord lives, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he is wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and on the Philistines went their own place. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel, and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the children of Ammon, and against Edom, and against the kings of Zobah, against the Philistines, and withsoever he turned himself, he vexed them. And he gathered a host, and smote the Amalekites, and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, Ishu, and Melchua. The names of his two daughters were these, the name of the firstborn, Merab, the, num- the name of the younger, Mishal. And the names of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaz. And the name of his captain of the host was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. And Kish was the father of Saul. Ner was the father of Abner, was the son of Abel. And there was sore war against Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or valiant man, he took him unto him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you with all my heart. In your loving name I pray. Amen.